the past six months, I've reached deep into NASA to listen to the hopes and the dreams of uh, the NASA employees. I've listened to the uh, concerns expressed by America's leaders outside the agency, and also the compliments that they've made of the wonderful work that NASA has done. I've been to all of our centers but one. I've met with all the red teams and blue teams, sometimes a few times. Met with leaders in academia, CEOs of corporations. I've met with small entrepreneurial businesses, small disadvantaged businesses. I met with leaders of the minority community, women's community in the country. And I've traveled abroad, met with the leaders abroad, met with 200 members of Congress. I read the Augustine Report, the Payne Commission Report, the Rogers Report. And when I go through all of this, there's universal agreement that NASA is vital to our nation and cannot afford to fail. And NASA must perform its missions by reaching for the planets and the stars but at the same time, as I talked a few days ago, bring back cutting-edge technology to generate new jobs and new industries and hope and opportunity. And uh, we can do it and have been doing it. But to do it even better, today I'm going to announce uh, the following changes in our organization to improve management and bring focus to programs that are very, very essential to America's future. The first program, and it's so important to our future, is Space Station Freedom. And on Space Station Freedom, we have the support of the American people in the Congress. And in 1993, we have to deliver on the promise. So as a first step, as part of the restructuring and the management approach, we're going to put two of our very best people on Space Station Freedom. First, we have Tommy Campbell the control of NASA. Tommy is going to go over and be the chief financial officer on Space Station Freedom. We're taking the strongest financial person at NASA, if not in the government, and sending him over the station. Tommy is very gracious. He, is pri he feels privileged to do it, and he told me how excited he was uh, just a few hours ago. Marty Kress, who's head of legislative affairs, is going to go over to Space Station Freedom as the uh, deputy program manager for policy and management to Dick Coors. Marty is one of uh, up-and-coming, bright people. He did a wonderful job working with me on the Hill to convince the Congress that it was right in proceeding with space station freedom. Marty's committed to the space station. And he's going to bring a tremendous wealth of capability in tying our international partners closer together, bringing the utilization community, the scientists and the engineers and industry and academia that are going to take part in this wonderful uh, program to bring them closer together so that they feel that they're participating and to relieve Dick Coors of a variety of management duties so Dick Coors could assure that we have a successful CDR and the hardware comes out when it's supposed to come out. Now, there are a variety of other tasks associated with the space station and its management structure that have not been resolved yet by our red team and our roles and missions team. And because we have not yet reached consensus, we're going to hold off until we really uh, work it through. There's a meeting of the NASA top team this Saturday. We're going to continue our deliberations. And as soon as we get our consensus, then we'll move with the next steps on space station freedom. But we felt it was so important to get our real key people there. And this is the first in a series of management moves we're going to make to bring the very best we have in NASA to the space station. Mary Kerwin will become the acting admi assistant administrator for legislative affairs. And she was the director of liaison division for the legislative affairs activity. And uh, Gary Allison will become the acting uh, controller. And both of these jobs will be uh, advertised for open competition. Clearly, uh, we have high regard for these two people in the acting capacity. But these jobs are going to be opened up to all of America. The next. Uh, uh, appointment gives me tremendous pleasure, and that is Len Fisk will become the chief scientist of NASA. He is uh, one of the most brilliant people we have in this organization, probably one of our most uh, effective and uh, strongest contributors in the science area. And in order to get closer to academia, to communicate with the presidents of our major universities, to get much closer 
with the large and small corporations in their R&D facilities and get NASA tied into America so we could transfer our technology and we could pull technology out of all these places so we could always be on the cutting edge, Len is going to be there. And as I discussed a few days ago, NASA is going to intensify its efforts in the international arena, and Len is going to be our spokesman. And I think it's very important to recognize that NASA is more than just management and programs. NASA exists for science and exploration, and I'm thrilled to have a man of Len's stature join me in the administrator's office. And Len and I talked, and hopefully he'll be joining me in days, and, but it'll be no longer than, than, than two weeks because we have a lot of work to do to get his organization structured for change. In the area of OSSA, to get the organization aligned to programs and science and to get more visibility to the American community and the administrator, we're going to break up OSSA, the Office of Space Science Applications, into two parts, Mission to Planet Earth and Mission from Planet Earth. And Shelby Tilford will be the acting uh, associate administrator for Mission to Planet Earth. And Wes Huntress will be the acting associate administrator for Mission from Planet Earth. Now, once again, there are a few details that we have not yet worked out. There isn't consensus yet on how to go about uh, where we put life sciences and microgravity, but we're going to have a, a further set of roles in uh, missions meetings. And I felt it would be inappropriate to break the spirit of teamwork that was going on there as we made these changes. So we'll continue our deliberations, and as soon as we get done, we'll be able to announce that. But this is going to really be an opportunity for strengthening our planetary astrophysics programs and get us more focused in meeting a moral commitment we have to America and the people of the world to bring back the data to understand what is happening to our environment, what are the naturally induced effects, and what are the, what are the human induced effects, because policymakers need this very critical data over the decades ahead to make the very difficult decisions that have to be made. And I'm very proud of this team. By breaking it up into two parts, you know, it was getting very, very big. I think we'll be more focused. But I was just speaking to some of the people from Len's advisory committee on the phone, and I assured them we're not going to lose the synergism that Len built in having a science community. And we're going to work very closely with the advisory committees, the National Research Council, and the uh, committees thereof to assure that we have coherence in our science programs. Another area that's uh, become quite clear in need of focus and attention is aeronautics. I talked about this uh, 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 over the last few weeks. I have now met with most of the uh, major uh, uh, CEOs and managers of our aeronautics program in this country, and it's clear that they believe the relationship with NASA is beneficial. The Department of Defense has a good relationship with NASA in terms of its cutting-edge technology. So we're announcing today that uh, we're going to break OAST into two parts, the Office of Aeronautics, and I'll talk about the second part in just a moment. But this Office of Aeronautics is very, very crucial, and uh, Cecil Rosen will be the acting associate administrator of this office, and Pete Peterson, who has been the head of OAST, is going to undertake a very difficult job. The Augustine uh, report and panel had indicated that infrastructure was one of the key issues that NASA had to take a good hard look at. And as we went out and talked to the folks in the aeronautics industry, in the space industry, it became clear that there was a lot of duplication of facilities in the Department of Defense and NASA and in industry. And as a result, we've spread a whole large infrastructure across the country. But what we've got to have are focused facilities that are world class. So Pete Peterson is going to undertake a 15-month study to work with industry, work with the Department of Defense and other departments of U.S. government to see how we could work closer together in aeronautics and space to come up with a facility infrastructure that gives us world-class facilities and utilizes the resources uh, that the taxpayers and industry are providing to get maximum benefit. So uh, Pete Peterson is going to have uh, 15 months, and we're going to all be working with him to assure that we get the very best infrastructure in this country. The second half of uh, OA OAST, the S, uh, the, the T in uh, OAS, space technology in OAST, is going to be combined with the uh, commercial activity. 
and we are going to form the Advanced Concepts and Technology Office that will catalyze activities at NASA to be on the cutting edge of technology. We want to have advanced concepts. We want to have a place in NASA where entrepreneurs feel comfortable to show up with brand new ideas, where people in academia who have an idea and want to work with NASA could bring it, a place where industry that's in need of technology transfer could come to NASA for the very latest technology and feel that there's a receptive place, a voice to listen to them where we will be able to help them move out and develop new industries and new products. And most of all, a place where we could aggressively deal with the commercialization of space. So this is going to be a small, tight-knit, catalytic organization. And we've asked Gregory Reck uh, to become the acting associate administrator of uh, this new office for advanced concepts and technology. Courtney Stad uh, will assist him as the acting deputy associate administrator to bring in the uh, commercial aspects and to tie in the commercial industry. Uh, Jack Mannix, who's presently head of the, uh, the uh, commercial office, will become associate general counsel for intellectual property. And I look forward to the tremendous uh, uh, output that uh, Jack is going to make. So we have defined a number of new organizations. We have uh, defined opportunity. We're going to advertise all these jobs widely across the country in academia. We're going to advertise these jobs in uh, industrial and uh, professional journals. We're going to advertise these jobs in minority uh, publications and uh, publications that women read because we want the very best in America. We want NASA employees to apply and we want the very best people in America to apply, and we'll have an open competition and select the very, very best people. I'm terribly excited. Uh, I've been on the phone for the last few hours, and I, I believe uh, it's been very positive. The people involved feel very, very good about it, and uh, we've begun phase one of the restructuring at NASA. Thank you very much, and the, uh, before we end, I'd like to ask Len Fisk, who's going to have to be dealing with me on a day-to-day -day basis, <laughs> to come up and say a few words. Len? Thank you, Dan. Just a <coughs> couple comments. I, I think there's an important message in, in the reestablishment of the position of chief scientist. Uh, it, uh, it sends the very clear message that, that science is such an integral part of what we do here at NASA. And it uh, is the part of the NASA program which really lends itself so naturally to the things that we try and do. Uh, as Dan said the other day in his remarks, if you, if you break down the sort of goals of the agency, it's, it's to provide inspiration, it's to provide hope, it's to provide opportunity and for international, in addition, uh, international cooperation. And uh, science plays a very natural role in all of those, those activities. And so uh, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to, to bring that theme to the agency uh, on a very broad scale of all of what NASA does, and also to communicate to the rest of the world that, that NASA has so many things to offer, both in, in, uh, in science and in technology. Thank you, Len. Let me shake your hand again. <laughs> and uh, let me just close by saying, uh, the first six months that I've been at NASA have been the happiest moments of my life, the most tiring moments, <laughs> the hardest working moments, but uh, the NASA employees are wonderful. Uh, they're an exciting, motivated group of people that really want to make a difference in our world. And uh, we're going to continue the wonderful tradition that's been set. We're going to move forward, and we have nothing but uh, inspiration, hope, opportunity, and uh, the thought that we could be a catalytic action for peace in the world. So thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to working with everybody in the future.